Welcome back. So we had a course issue right here. Let's just try and look at it first. Something like this. Access control allow origin issue right here when we start communicating be between these two. And now what you need to check is th the actual place that we're working right now, if it's here in the live version or if it's actually on your local host. Let me just try and over local host as well. That's actually not the same place um, path-wise or domain-wise. This is localhost. This is something called Awesome Product Map Firebase Com. It's not the same domain as where our functions reside, right? So they are on two different domains. And when we look at that, we need to check out the course origin resource sharing. We need to set that up for our backend and explain to the backend that this domain is actually allowed to communicate with the new area, right? So you can read it like this: course origin. Resource sharing is a mechanism that uses additional HTTP headers to tell a browser to let a web application running at one origin have permission to access selected resources from a server at a different origin, right? So it's a way for us to set up that it's allowed for my local host or my, um, my live version right here to communicate with the function setup that we have available up here on our functions on Firebase. Right? So we need to set that up somehow. Now how do we do it? Well, we need to go into our HTTP request and explain to it that we want to allow, right now we'll allow anybody from anywhere to actually control and work with our products in this setup right here. Now there's a reason that it works from Postman, that is that Postman don't care. Postman doesn't make that check, but your browsers do make those checks to, to kind of make you secure that what you're talking to is actually allowed to talk to, right? Sweet. Let's try and fix it inside the code. Step one is to go in here and start using a new thing called course. So we need to kind of set up course right here in our setup. And it's luckily very easy to do. We just need to add a couple of lines of code and we're done. But first what you need to understand is we need some kind of small plugin that can help us out do this easy. So what we'll do is we'll install a small NPM guy called course. And that guy will kind of use to wrap all our requests to kind of explain it's allowed for anybody to communicate with um, it's allowed for anybody to kind of communicate with this setup right from the outside so what we'll do is we'll first import all and right now I don't have course but it'll be course module I'll be getting right here module from and then I have something called course right here so that's where we kind of want it. Now, again, it's not available right now inside my package.json. So if you open your package.json, again, notice I'm opening the one inside the functions folder. That's very important, not the one inside the main project, which is an Angular app, right? I'm opening the one in the functions folder. And you'll notice right here, there's nothing here called course. And that's why it kind of explains, well, I don't know that. It doesn't exist in the package.json file. So let's try and, and import that. So what I'll do is I'll say npm install minus minus course oops course <laughs> minus minus save there we go this is the one i want to install and i want to save it locally right so remember the double minus right there now if i fire, fire this command right here and i'm inside the main folder right notice i'm inside the main folder the top folder it'll actually end up putting that information inside this package json the one that belongs to angular so this won't help me very important thing to know. I'll just try and execute it so you guys can see it. Um, this is the wrong place. I'll do it, but it doesn't matter. You guys, if you guys don't get course, oh, 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 stop, 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 stop. Course doesn't, we don't spell course like that. It's like that. There we go. If you don't get this uh, into your functions, it's probably because you kind of did an npm install in the wrong folder. Now, what will happen again is it'll place that information, notice right here, it'll place it inside this package JSON, but it will not place it inside the right package JSON inside the functions. So I actually didn't install course right here because I put it inside the wrong um, package JSON file, right? So let's just uninstall that again. Very simple. You just run the same command in the same folder, but you'll write uninstall. There we go. So let's just get that out of the way again. Now, what I need to do to make this correct is I need to, before I run the npm install, I need to go into the functions folder. Okay, so I'll just dump into that folder, cd functions. And this is where I run my command from now. npm install course, save inside this folder. Then I'll get it into the right package.json file. And I just wanted you guys to see that because you might end up making that mistake if you don't take care. Sweet. So now that is available. I have course available inside my REST API right here. And I can now start using it. Now it complains now, but it's just because it's declared but never used. So what I can do is actually, and this is kind of the part where you need to just <laughs> follow along as, as well as you can. I'm going to initialize this module right here. So I'm going to make it constant. I'm just going to call it course. 
and that'll be from the course module. And in here, we'll add an option. And there's something you have to do that says origin true. Origin true. There we go. Now you need to add this option. It's not something you can decide. It's not something you don't have to. You have to add this or else it won't work for you. Now the final thing is we'll add the course right here. And the way that you add it into your system is pretty much just by wrapping everything inside the course call now. So whenever we do something, we'll allow uh, pretty much any course requests. There we go. And I'll just say, I want to get used to request. I want to use the response. Response. That's these two you see up here. And I'm going to get just an empty method right here that I'm just going to pass on with. There we go. And this guy just needs to wrap all my code. We can just copy all of this code all the way down to the else statement, poof, and I'll just paste that in here, poof, and I'm done. So now everything will be allowed through the course setup because I added those lines right there. Now you'll notice the wait starts failing and that's because now it's not the right function that's async because it needs to be the nearest function and that's why I need to move async from here into here. So this is the final code you see right here. This is how you kind of set up everything to be passed and allowed through course. Now this is not the best setup right now. You should actually go in and say what areas you want to allow to communicate with your application or you should figure out how we in Firebase we can set up so we only communicate with our main application. So we'll set that up later but for now this is fine. We have course now. Let's just do a deployment see if it works. So I'll just clean this up right now. Boom and I'll just try and add this guy again. Hopefully now we won't be crashed by the course setup. Now it'll say okay you just opened up for anything from the outside to actually start sending requests and there we go. It just opened up and we got our new snurf in here. Let's try and do the same thing from localhost just to kind of show you guys that it's also running from there. Let's make a snail here. I'll choose a file and again let's just pick the hunting guy right there. There's a, probably a snail up there in the tree. I'll do an add and hopefully I'll also get this from the localhost right here. There we go. So we're up and running now with course. Now you guys might be thinking what was this origin true all about? Well here you can actually go in and decide exactly where you want to get information from. So let's just for the fun of it try and change this. So what I'll do instead is I'll say I want to only allow the origin, this origin right here which is the one I'm, I'm using right now on my live setup. I only want to use that one. I can actually put it in here. So instead of Instead of just allowing anything by setting it to true, I can say I only want to allow this if you're from this origin right here. So let's just move this to another line so it's easier to read. And let's just get rid of this end slash there. So let's try and deploy this now to Firebase and see if we're getting what we want. I'll just do the execution right here. The Firebase deploy is complete. Let's just try and jump in and see how it actually works right now. First of all, let's try and create a new product over here. Now I'm on the live version on awesome products, the one I put in the URL for. So let's create a new snail right here and just, just add an image, anything. Let's add that and let's see what happens. The snail is created as it should, perfect things. And let's try and do the same thing now with the module right here, uh, where we actually go from localhost and see if that also has access. Now, I didn't set up the actual access for the localhost, so it should actually fail now because of the way course is set up. There we go, you get not allowed access control, right? So that's how simple it is to actually work with course in here. And we can dive more into that when we start building a REST API in another series. Let's just end it here. Now you guys know that course is available. And again, if you don't care who accesses your application, you just put in true right here and anybody can have access. Or you can go in specifically and decide what routes or domains has access to your backend. Very powerful stuff. So that's it for this lesson. I know it was a bit long, but now you know everything there is to know about creating some kind of HTTP request like this and actually also creating, in our case, something a bit more complex than just a basic uh, creation of storage and files inside a database. So have fun. See you next time.